Today's webinar, the topic is developing listening skills and our teacher guides. Now, let me just move one of my things across, our teacher guides. We have a series of new teacher's guides. The ones I'm going to talk to you about today are the ones for A2 key for schools and B1 preliminary for schools. We've got uh, a webinar on the levels for the higher levels, but that's not coming up just yet. It will be coming sometime in the future, so there's no need to worry about that. Okay, let's talk about the aims for today's webinar. Okay, the aim of today's webinar is to show you how the new teacher guides can be used as a training and as a teaching resource. And the way we've achieved this is to devote attention to the teaching, to the learning and to the assessment. And we've provided for you within the guides insights into what it is to listen, to listen in another language. And so we look carefully at the subskills of listening. And the approach we adopt is to think about how to teach listening, the pedagogy, but with an exam focus, bearing in mind that we're supporting you to support your learners to prepare them for their exam. And so the guides also provide practical teaching activities and we've got integrated audio. So there's no need to search for the piece on the, of, the, of the audio. It's just there. Click the icon straight to the audio. So the guides also provide a teacher resource pack for you so that this links the guide straight to the resource pack where you've got your teaching activities saved in the resource pack, which is lovely. So without further ado, welcome to your new guides. Let's try and change the slide. OK, let's take a closer look and I'll give you a, a snapshot of what they look like when you download them from the website. Here we have the, the guide, which is for B1 preliminary for schools. You can see the teacher in her classroom there. And here we have the guide for the A2 key for schools with a really happy little girl who's listening. Uh, and she's the A2 key for schools learner. And she's practicing her listening by the looks of it. Um, very, very clear contents page. Each of these contents you can click and it will take you directly to that section. So if you want to know more about key terminology, click key terminology and it will take you straight there. So you don't have to keep scrolling through to find the page you want. And then here's the resource pack. And the resource pack um, is linked to the guide by a hyperlink, but also it's a separate downloadable resource pack. Um, someone's asked about sharing the links. Yes, but not just yet. You have to be patient. We'll save it. The best till last. OK, so why are the guides such a valuable resource right now? Well, we've all been living through a global pandemic. And right now, face to face professional development is not an easy option, if it is at all. So these guides have been written and designed to support you to support your learners. And the way it does this is achieved by making very clear links between listening as a language skill, the teaching of listening with an exam focus, the pedagogy, and thereby supporting you to support your learners for exam success. And of course, there are tips with activities um, with an exam focus and everything is guiding you to support your learners for exam preparation. So let's take a look at one of the first sections of the guide, which is insights into the skill of listening. I've got a little poll for you. So I want to see what your thoughts are, get your opinions. Now, the guide explores the sub skills of listening. And I want you to tell me, what do you think prediction is a subskill that A, 
you can practice in class, but it's not practical for the exam. Or is it, in your opinion, B, useful in the classroom and in, hang on, my poll's covered up my screen, and in the exam. Now, what do you think? Is it A or is it B? So please vote now. And if you can't use the voting buttons, please add your comments into the chat box. So what do you think, A or B? Let's take a look at C. Can you click go? I can't see anybody voting at the minute. Oh, hosts and panelists cannot vote. Let's just see. Um, I can see here that the hosts and the panelists can't vote. OK, I can see everybody commenting here. Good. Well done for using the chat box. OK, there it is. They were there. So I can see everybody is saying it's useful in the classroom and in the exam. And that is really helpful because you can see that this is a strategy that you can use in both places. I'm going to end the poll now. And the final outcome was, yes, 80% useful in the exam. I'm delighted that you thought that. But let's take a look at the next screen. So the, the guide encourages you as a teacher to practice prediction skills in class. But why is it so important? Well, prediction is a strategy that prepares to you, the learner to listen. And if they're prepared to listen, they're also prepared to understand. And this can be achieved by highlighting keywords. We know this, we know how to do it in class, but we want to encourage learners to do it in the exam as well. So super helpful to discuss the questions and the topic. And this means that you're going to encourage learners to anticipate the vocabulary that they're going to hear. They're ready, they're organized, their head is ready. Now, practice, as we know, or we hope, makes perfect. So by practicing in the classroom, when you come to the uh, exam day, learners know what to look for. They know how to read the questions questions, check the questions, anticipate what they might hear, and they can do it quickly because they do it in class. So great preparation for the exam. So I've got another question for you, and I'm wondering how you may answer this one. Now, one of the things that I recall so clearly when I was a learner teacher was that I kept hearing um, things about what bottom-up processing was, what, what it meant. And teachers talked about it, but I wasn't really sure what it was. So I, this is explained um, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in the guide. So what is bottom-up processing? Is it A or B? Here we go. Is it A, building meaning from small units of sound? Or is it B, using what the speaker says to make sense of unfamiliar words. So bottom up processing, vote now. Hang on, let me just put my clicker on. And of course, you can add your comments. So we've got a fair proportion of people voting different ways. We've got some saying A. It's looking at judging by my numbers here is looking a bit like both. Yes, there's a little bit more uncertainty here. But I'm going to end the polling now. So here we go. So the final score was that most of you, 53% thought it was building many from small units of sound, whereas 47 making sense of unfamiliar was. So it was almost even. Let me just close that one down. Let's check. So bottom up processing. Bottom up processing is focusing on the small stuff. It's focusing on the units of sound. It's building meaning from the small units of sound. So top-down processing is looking at the bigger picture. It's using what the speaker says, listening carefully to make sense of unfamiliar words. So you're listening for contents, context. You may be listening for gist to get the main idea. Whereas bottom-up processing is much more about the detail and perhaps 
not necessarily hearing every word, but listening for those key words. The guide will guide you on this. So how does the guide approach this? Let me just take you through the approach that we've adopted. We provide you with the name of each subskill of listening with a definition to summarize precisely what it is. And we give you an example of this subskill in everyday listening. Now, I think that's super helpful for the learners because that means that you can show them and tell them about why this is useful, how this is going to help them when they are speaking and when they're listening. And importantly, the guide shows you which part of the exam tests which subskill. But more than that, we go a step further. We illustrate in the guide learner strategies in practice so that there's a little picture of each learner and what they do to work out meaning when they're listening. We start with a picture of Diego. He's in the guide and he is following directions. Now, he doesn't understand every word, but he uses his knowledge of the world and where he's trying to get to. So he has an idea where the station is, but he doesn't quite know the streets to follow. But he listens for key words and uses the context. Then we have Maktab. She loves sport, loves it. She uses her knowledge of the topic and she guesses the meaning using and listening for key words. Meanwhile, Ying Xuan is listening to an anecdote uh, about friends. And I have to move my chat box. It's covering things up. And he listens. He doesn't understand everything, but he doesn't worry. He just listens. He waits and he listens for more information. So don't panic if you don't understand easily. Just listen. These are all strategies we try to tell our learners. And then we have Yana. Yana is chatting to her friends and she hears a new word. She doesn't know what it means, but she knows the story. So she's guessing it from context. Now, these are strategies that uh, these, uh, these learners are using, but all learners use when they're practicing listening. All very helpful. Now, we're going to practice a task. Um, I'll explain more as we go along. Now, we talked a little bit earlier about practicing bottom-up processing. Do you remember listening to connected speech and listening for the weak forms in connected speech? And can you hear them? So the guide provides you with an activity that perhaps you can try. And this is a link to the audio. If you want to go into the guide, take a look and you can adapt it for your class. Let me talk you through it. The, the, the activity is called, how many words? It's an activity uh, that to try after completing a normal listen, listening. Um, I noticed that someone has said they can't copy the link. The link is in the guide. So at the end, when you go into the guide, you can find it. So I won't, it's not available right now. Don't worry, it's coming. So this is an activity to complete after you've completed your classroom listening. So they know what the topic is. They know what the vocabulary is. They know what to expect. But this is a micro listening. So you're going to select a short phrase, not a long phrase, a short phrase, perhaps 15 words maximum. Take it from the audio they've just listened to. Cue the audio up and play the micro listening. You can try it with this one when you've finished uh, the webinar. The task is that you want the learners to do something quite simple. All they have to do is listen and count the number of words they hear after the word, but. And this is the words that come before. I'll read it to you. I have a, to own up. My technology has let me down. The computer said no. So 
I'm going to talk you through it. I apologize. So, yeah, with my sister. She loves it. But what comes next? Here we go. How many words did our learners hear after the word but? With my sister, she loves it, but. Now, play the audio and you can check with your class and say, how many words did you hear? Take a vote, take a vote, hands up, how many words? Or if you're teaching online, type the number of words you heard into the chat box. So let's check. Hang on, I've got to move my screen, my little chat box here. So I'm not as keen as she is. So I'm going to read the phrase to you. Yeah, with my sister, she loves it, but I'm not as keen as she is. Okay, now what we would like to do is play it. So the question is, how many words? And I'm going to ask you that. How many words? Can you count them? I'm going to ask you to type into the chat box. Do you, do you agree? Some say seven, some say eight. That's a very interesting answer. Why? Why is there a dis disagreement? And which one is right? Some say six. No, not six. There are seven or eight. OK, now, really interesting that you've noticed that we could have six, seven, or we could have eight. Why? Contractions. Lovely. That it is because of the contractions. So we can have I'm as one word or equally we can take it as two words. Both answers are correct. Now, you've completed the listening. You've completed the guessing with the learners putting their hands up in class. There's another stage. So the next stage in this little activity is to write the micro listening on the board. And here you can see on the right hand side, here's my micro listening. I'm not as keen as she is. The next step is to listen again and ask the learners to discuss which words were stressed. And I'm going to ask you by listening to me. So I'm not as keen as she is. Which words were stressed? Which words were the strongest ones? Can you type them in? Keen, she, keen, yep. Yeah. I'm not as, is it more than one word or multiple words? Not keen, she. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll put you out your misery. So these are the stressed words. Now, isn't that interesting? We haven't played the audio, but you could see here where the stress was. I've got another question for you. And this is the question you can ask your learners. Hmm. Why do you think these words are the stressed words? Not iambic pent pentameter. It's not a, it, it's much simpler than that. Aha, uh -huh. beautiful. Someone said they carry the meaning. They're content words. They deliver the core message of what they're listening for. So if learners may feel anxious because they didn't catch anything. What they're listening for is the key information. So it can be quite reassuring. I've got another question for you. Why don't we hear the other words as clearly? I'm going to click my thing. I'm as is. Why don't you think we hear those so much? Yeah, the function words, exactly. Exactly that. So in fact, it's a really lovely message for your learners to think it's okay if you don't hear every word, but listen for the key words and it delivers it really clearly. So how does this micro listening, I'm going to just move my chat box again, hang on, be bear with me. How does the micro listening help our learners? Well, what you're doing is you're raising learners awareness of sounds, the strong sounds and the weak sounds. So you're raising the learner's awareness of the stressed words, the key words. But also, if you notice the key words, the stressed words, you then start to become aware of the quiet words, the unstressed words. And of course, what we want to encourage our learners to do is to develop noticing skills. And we all know that this is a really good skill for a language learner to have. 
And so this tiny micro listening really helps learners to become better listeners. Nice little activity for you to try. Anyway, I want to go on. I want us to explore now the learner and the teacher perspective because we explore this in the guides. So the guides look at, uh, from the learner's perspective, the challenges for our learners of listening and for the teacher as well. So what are the challenges of listening in English for the learner? So put your thinking caps on, type your ideas into the chat box and to, and to use an idiom, I'm all ears. I may not be able to hear you, but I can see you. So let's take a look. Thinking caps on, challenges of listening. Okay, unfamiliar vocabulary. Yes, unknown words. Anything else that's coming in? I'm watching you carefully. Nerves. Yes, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Speed, accent, distraction, so easy. Interesting one, intonation, different people's voices. Um, limited vocabulary, speed, emotional stress. Yes, and in, currently, I think for our learners, that is a reality. The first and the last words, new vocabulary, some fantastic ideas. So I'm going to put you out your misery. And let's take a look at the next slide. Here are some of the challenges for the learner. And I think you've captured most of them. We, somebody has said, it's too noisy. The text is too fast. Oh, so quick, I can't understand it. And for our learners who are listening in class to the audio recording, of course, they can't see the speaker's face. And so, what they're missing is what we call the paralinguistic features, the, the body language, as I do a lot all the time. Somebody else has super segmental features. Yes, indeed. We have language levels. That also can be challenging. Pronunciation issues, which you've all mentioned. And of course, the unfamiliar topic, those words that they don't know. And so we need to give them the strategies to help them guess meaning from context. And this is a lovely one because um, many of you have mentioned this with anxiety, but motivation and self-belief. So I think in this last 12 months more, for many of our learners, it's, it's challenging for them. They, they're not quite sure where they are or where they're going and can they still do it? Can they remember? And so I think it's, it's, it's difficult for them to. Confidence as well. Yeah, exactly. And I agree, Maria, they do get frustrated. It's very, very easy to get frustrated. So what about practical considerations from the teacher's perspective. So what are the challenges for you as teachers in your classrooms? Well, I appreciate that as having been a teacher for very many years, that we are so busy, we have so much to cover, that time and space in our syllabus, in the lesson, is very, very difficult for us because there's so much to do and how much time do you actually have? Again, I think access to materials can be a challenge. Um, access to audio. And in fact, if you are preparing learners for an exam, you really need to have materials that are created as exam preparation, because this will give them the chance to practice listening for the exam. And are they compatible for the exam? Yes, somebody's mentioned limited time period that you don't have. Building rapport online, also a challenge. I, I can understand that. And then, of course, we come back to feedback. And so important to give our learners feedback, to tell them how they're performing. And to do that, it's important to check understanding. And that means not just giving them the answers, but checking that they've, they've got the understanding. So concept checking with them that they do understand and why it is one answer 
but not the other. So important. So how is the guide uh, designed? What are the features of the guide? Um, and what, what sort of support do we offer you? So the design uh, features, um, now you may recognize this because um, we have, um, oh, it's okay, you've got a meeting, I understand that. I'm just watching the, the chat coming up and down here. So um, you may notice that the guide looks very similar to our writing guides that we launched towards the end of last year. And each of the guides has got hyperlinks and navigational tools. And these are designed to take you where you want to go. So for example, here is the, the, the link so that you can get to the resources. And here is the navigation so you can find your way around the, uh, the guide. So you don't have to keep scrolling up and down. You can just move where you want to go. Previous page, next page, first page, previous, really easy to use. So very intuitive. So what else does the guide provide you with? Um, so it's all about the listening exam. It's only about the listening exam. The focus is predominantly listening. So there's no more searching for the handbook, the teacher's handbook. How many times have we reached to check the teacher's handbook? If it's a hard copy, where is it? Do we have it when we want it? Um, if it's a digital coffee, it's quite hard to, to get hold of. You've got to search online for it. But no more. It's all in the guide. So you'll see that we provide you with, hang on, let me just move my chat box. We provide you with uh, each exam part with uh, an explanation of the task format and what the learner has to do. Plus, we summarize what the listening, what listening skills are being tested. Yes, I agree with you. Um, using bookmarks is so, such a good idea, but sometimes we want something really quickly and we just have to, you know, look, look quickly. We've tried to make it easy. So we also provide you with top tips and you'll see the little star icon, which has got the tips. And these are the do's and the don'ts what you should do, perhaps maybe not a good idea to do, the don'ts. And we've got these for each stage of the listening lesson. We provide you with do's and don'ts, general advice, ideas for before listening tips, while they're listening, and after listening. Now, against each tip, if it's a do, it's got a green tick. If it's a don't, it's got a, a cross. So now I'm going to reach out to you and I'm going to ask you to compare ideas with each other. So teacher tips exchange, there's lots of you here. Can you type any tips that you think work really well for you when you're teaching listening? Anything in the chat box. All your ideas are welcome. So any ideas for teaching, listening? Good. Underlining keywords. The first ones come in. Well done, Marianella. So preview vocabulary, pre-teach, probing questions, read carefully before listening, talk about the topic. Absolutely. What we might call activating schema. Instruction matter, keywords, providing visuals. What we're doing is creating a context to prepare to listen and then understand. Give instructions, mm -hmm. underline keywords, personalize the topic, explore the questions. That's a lovely one. Top, listen uh, with, uh, with your eyes closed. I love that one. That's something that uh, is it ad recommended as a strategy. So let's move to the next slide. Got lots of prediction coming in there. So I've got another question for you. For tips for developing listening skills. What do you think? It's a poll again. I want you to vote. Do you think, in your opinion, it's a good idea to check answers as soon as the recording finishes while they can remember? Or B, give them time? after the recording has finished before checking answers. Is it A or B? So let's see, vote now and add your comments into the chat box. I can see lots and lots of Bs coming in. 
There's a few A's there. OK, it's an interesting one, isn't it? It's this conflict between how much time you've got. And I think this is a uh, this is interesting for us. OK, things are starting to settle. Lots of B's. OK, I'm going to end the poll now and let's see what the final result was. The final results were that B was the one that is the top tip that you advised. So let me just uh, close that. I'll, I'll share the results so you can see that. OK, I think you can see that now. OK, so let's move on to the next slide and we'll take a look. So the guide recommends that you wait a moment after the recording is finished before checking answers. If you think about it, there's a lot for the learner to do because they're listening, but they're also having to process the question. So there's reading connected as well, attached to the listening. So there's a lot of cognitive processing that the learners have to do to process. So it's important to allow thinking time to reflect, process information, and importantly, make a decision on their answers. I don't think I just said the opposite. OK, so do. Here we go. This is another strategy. Practice strategies to tech the question. So uh, you've all mentioned this. Fantastic. Highlight keywords, analyze the question, be prepared. And against the do's and don'ts, there is also hyperlinks taking you through to the activities to practice these strategies where you'll see it set out and explained in an activity. Make time to discuss the distractors. I've noticed a number of you comment on the distractors and how important they are. It's just as important to check why A is correct but to check why they think B and C are not correct. So why is it one but not the other? So it's really important. Um, somebody has mentioned that in the listening test that, that the time is uh, of the essence. Um, I'll just come back on that because, of course, in the listening test, they listen once, they've checked the question, they've listened once, they think they know the answer, and then they listen again and they can go back and process and double check. So we try to help them in that strategy. So if you practice these strategies in class, they feel prepared in the exam when time is more precious. So let's think about the activities uh, in the guides. The activities in the guides integrate teaching and learning, but with an assessment focus. So this is the way it's set up. We have one activity for each part of the exam. So for A2 key for schools, there are five activities. B1 preliminary, there are four activities. The activities may be part of a task to demonstrate how to approach teaching for the exam, for the exam listening, or it may be a complete uh, task with the audio. Sample exam papers are not are supplied, but don't worry, we provide you with a link to the mock test toolkit. And in the mock test toolkit, you can see and find the sample tests that we have available. The approach to the activities are that it's step by step teaching, listening, to build learner confidence, to develop listening skills so that they develop exam strategies for listening. So in a sense, by practicing in the classroom slowly, it becomes automatic when they go into the exam room. Yes, I agree. I think the mock test is really important. That's a nice uh, comment there, Noelle. So let's take a look at what one of the activities looks like. This is a typical activity and I'll show you through the different features. The, it begins with task familiarization and this is really helpful to check in with learners so that you know that they know what the uh, activity is so that there's no surprise by the time they come to the exam. You've checked and check regularly that they know what to expect. Activity aims. What is the point of this activity? How is this activity going to help your learners? 
Then there's the prepare stage with the different steps and the instructions, clear instructions all the way through to guide the learners. And we provide audio links. And if you look, you can see that the audio has a little picture of the headphones so that you can see where the audio comes in. And the recording has a hyperlink so you can go straight there. And then we provide you with the answers. So the answers are there. The answers are provided in the guide and in the handouts. But what about A2 key for schools? What, what does it look like for them? This is B1 preliminary. We follow the same model. It looks the same. The task is different, but it's, like, it, it's got the same, same features. We provide you with information about the task, task familiarization, the aims, the prepare stage, the instructions. Let me move my chat box around and the answers. But here you can see that we also, in this example, provide you with tips to scaffold and support the learner with different ideas, perhaps for stronger learners, how to support, um, how to support them. Let me move to the next slide. And what about, hang on, my, my chat box is right in the middle of my screen. What about the design? Let me take a look. So I talked very early on in the, uh, in the presentation about the fact that the approach in terms of design of activities is that it's pedagogy, so teaching listening, but teaching listening with an exam focus. So we take it very gently, step by step. And I'm going to give you a little example here. Here we have a B1 preliminary for schools, part three. And we're going to do it together. The first step is prepare to listen. Hang on, I don't know if you can all still see me. Okay, it's prepare to listen. So it's going to be uh, the, the prepare to listen. I want you to be my learners and we're going to talk about writing. I'm going to ask you the question, what was the, for the chat box, what was the last thing that you wrote? Type your ideas into the chat box now. Are you ready? The last thing that you wrote. Let me see, any ideas? I'm trying to see, 14 new messages come in, trying to get, get to them. I'm having trouble seeing my chat now. Let me see, I've got stuck on my chat. OK, I can't see your messages, so I'm really, really sorry, everybody. My chat box seems to. Ah, here we go. A bit more is moving up down. Familiarise the task. Oh, a report, an essay, a grocery list. Oh, how imaginative. Feedback on an essay, lesson plan, WhatsApp message. Mm, interesting. Lesson plans for next week. Oh, heavens, that's a lot, isn't it? Handwritten notes essay. Okay, interesting to think how many of you were writing uh, by hand and how many were writing on, a, on, on, your, on a, the computer. Okay, next, next part. So you've done this discussion with your, with your learners. Now I want you to look at this. You hear an announcement. Hang on, I'm going to move my, my screen. I've got a I'm doing it on my tiny laptop, this. You hear an announcement about a story writing competition. So, hang on. There we are. Not easy to do this on a, on a laptop. So, what do you think the topic of the story writing competition might be? So, you're going to write a story. Any ideas for a lovely story? What can you suggest to me? Type your ideas into the chat box. I'm all ears. Dragons, that's lovely, nice, imaginative story. Someone's going to write a story on dragons. Anybody else? Let's take a look. Any other ideas? I've only can see dragons. A memorable day. Oh, the worst day of your life. <gasps> UFO. Oh, not the pandemic. It's too sad. Love must not be forgotten. The blood moon. Oh, that's romantic. A strange planet. I think... We're a team of teachers who quite like sci-fi. The best moment of your life, favorite country, lovely. Now, next question is, how many words? Now, all the time I'm writing your ideas 
onto my whiteboard. Or if I've got Padlet, I might be writing it onto the screen on Padlet. 1,500 words. Now, bear in mind that you are B1 preliminary for schools learners. How many words do you think you would write? Let's see. 200 to 300. Yes, 80 to 120. 1,500 is quite a big ask for those learners. Okay, next. I've got another question for you. Do you think we should have a prize for our story or maybe more than one prize? Who says we should have a prize? Yes for prizes. One prize or more than one prize? Oh, definitely a prize. I agree. Yes. First, second and third. Okay. Should there be a surprise for everybody? A prize for everybody? More than one. Yes, that's nice. OK, so you can see what we've done in just five minutes is we've done some prediction. I'm going to click my screen. Next steps. Everyone's wanting a prize. Let's take a look at this. So here it's almost time to listen. But look, here is our task. Here is our task for our listening. Now, you'll see that you hear an announcement about a story writing competition. Now, we're going to ask the learners, listen, your story must be on the topic of. So we're going to take a look, really careful look at the question. So it's about the competition. I'm still moving my screen. Right. You don't have all the information. You're looking for the information. And that is what you're listening for. You're going to check the question and you're going to highlight the key words. And when you highlight the keywords, you're going to be playing detectives. And so this is a really lovely stage of your preparation for your listening. So here we go. Now I'm struggling to see because of my tiny screen. So the story must be on the topic of. Now we want to see whether our topic is one of the topics we guessed. Number of words. Is it going to be 1,500 or is it going to be 200? Story writers will get a, aha, uh -huh, something, could be a prize, but the prize for the best story, aha, uh -huh, I think it could be that there'll be a number one and other prizes. And you must send your email to the website editor, Stephanie, hmm, Stephanie what? Something's missing, but what is it? And learners will visit the, so we've done all the prediction before we've done the exploration of the task and the uh, guide will take you through that. So the next steps, I think we're ready, is to listen. So we provide you with support as well. Let me just try and move my chat box again. I'm having a lot of trouble here. So you're, I'm going to guess what is underneath my chat box. You're going to play detectives. And this is what you want your learners to do. So here you're going to take a look at the questions and you can see that we've been asking the learners to guess what the answers could be. And you're going to ask them to think about what type of word. But look, we've got tips for you. We've got tips and we can give you guidance, language guidance, that if you're not sure about what they should be listening for, this is here for you. So tell your story in a maximum of and the next word is words. So you can see tip two, there must be a plural number. So all the support is there to guide you through the lesson. So what have we done here? What we've pract practiced here is we've practiced preparing to listen. Together in five minutes, we reviewed the task. We got creative, we were imaginative. And then we listened, we really checked the tasks. They knew what they were listening for. And then, of course, this we're going to not only listen once, we're going to listen more than once, like we would in the exam. And then, of course, we're in class. We're going to take whole class feedback. What you notice, what we've just done, is we've practiced exam strategies but we've done it in slow motion. So notice we've done the prediction. The more we practice in class, the more fluent 
our learners become at really reading and understanding the task. So it's really lovely to be able to do this. So let's think about a follow up. We've completed the listening. It's a lovely listening. The topic was on writing the story. We've done our prediction task beforehand. What do you think could be a very nice optional follow up after they've done their uh, their activity? So type your ideas of what you think might be a very nice way to to, to follow up this act, this listening. So what to, what could you do? Write the story. Yes. In fact, they could write the story of their choice. So if they thought it was going to be a story about the blood moon, I think somebody had, or a UFO, they can write that. Or perhaps they could write the story from the listening or a summary <laughs> or write a novel. Oh, not sure we've got time for that. And you'd have to mark it because you're the teachers. OK, so the optional follow up is to exploit the prediction task and to write the story. So use everything that you elicited from your learners to write a brief story in capital letters I saw there. And they could perhaps do a spoken story so they could do collaborative, write, collaborative storytelling, practicing their speaking. Some really fabulous ideas here. But we also have this as an option for our A2 key for schools. Now, this is a listening part one uh, for our A2 key for schools. And in this activity, I'm just going to try and move my chat box yet again. I'm not I'm having no success with this. Um, the topic of this is uh, a trip to uh, uh, up a mountain. So two people, uh, they're going on a mountain trip. They're walking up a mountain. And this lady is telling her friend about walking up the mountain. So this is a really nice thing. So explaining the day, what it was like, what the weather was like walking up the mountain. Very, very interesting. You've completed the listening. So the optional follow up could be to exploit that topic for another writing. So write a postcard in this one, you'll see what we've tried to do is to write a postcard uh, to your best friend about your day walking up the mountain and notice the connection with the writing activity for A2 Key for Schools writing paper. So you're bringing together not only listening, but writing as well. So talk about where you went, who you were with what the weather was like, and we have the weather here because it, it says in the listening, and ask about your friend's holiday. So all of these things that we uh, have talked about in this uh, listening. Okay, now I think it's really important at the moment to be aware that no learner should be left behind. And so the guide provides suggestions about how you might um, support learners who may need a little bit of extra help. And here's some ideas. This is the gap fill, the, not the gap fill, when they have to find the word. And we want to support everybody. So this is one strategy that you could try. And I want, I, I want you to tell me this word. What could you do to help a, a learner who needs a bit of extra help? You could supply the, what's the word that's missing? The first, exactly right. The first letter of the missing word. That would be lovely. Scaffolding, it's exactly that. You could supply the first letter and you could supply the, what's the, what's the next word that's missing? We've got the first letter, the last letter. Absolutely right. So you can provide them with strategies and you don't need to make it open to all the learners just the learners that you know may need that little bit of extra help. And of course, the next level is you can supply them with the audio script. It's not cheating when you're practicing listening in class to, um, to give them the audio script, because what they're doing is reading and following. But as they read, they are listening. So it's not cheating. Obviously, this is not very exam day, but it is extra support so every learner can participate equally in the lesson. So teachers resources. 
we've got links throughout the guide to the resources and you'll see this little sign in the beginning open the attached resources you'll see the links all the way through so you can click into the resources all the activities we have handouts we've got audio scripts we've got annotated audio scripts which is super helpful for you because it will help you to know what to pick out when you're sharing you're doing feedback with learners we provide answer keys and annotated answer keys so an explanation of why it is one but not another and there's the link to the mock test toolkit as well with all the sample papers that you want and then we have the back page of the guide with hyperlinks to the resources, teacher resources, lesson plans and fabulous links for your professional development. If you're interested, where are your guides? This is really key. I've put the link here um, and I'm sure it can be shared in the chat. If you go to this link to the uh, Cambridge website, Teaching English Resources for Teachers, and you'll find a drop down box and you'll see choose your level of exams, B1 preliminary, teacher guide, select teacher guide and select listening. This is the B1 preliminary and of course not forgetting A2 key for schools, teacher guide for listening and there you will find it and the links can be shared with you in the chat box. So what did we do today? Teaching, the, the teacher guides for list, developing listening skills, we, I showed you how our new guys are a teaching and a training resource to support the development of listening. They're designed with attention to teaching, to learning and to assessment with an insight into those sub skills of listening that is so informative with tips and practical teaching activities as well. And of course, the all important resource pack. So absolutely lovely. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for being such good. Oh, now the resources, um, there's an interesting question there. What about materials who learners who can't afford this material? This material is not chargeable. Go to the website and this material is free of charge. It's to support you, to support your learners. So it's not a chargeable resource. So don't worry about that. It is a free resource. So I hope that was helpful for you. And the other levels are coming soon. I would recommend you take a good look at the, um, at, 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 the, at the guide. I think you'll love it. So that's really, really nice. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to wave goodbye and thank you so much for, um, for, for joining.